So the first speaker uh, in the session two will be Dr. Shushil Bhunia from Bits Pilani, Hyderabad. And uh, Shushila will be talking on conjugacy and reversibility problems in groups. Yeah, over to you, Shushila. You may start. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Soma, and uh, thanking, uh, first of all, thanks everyone who organized this uh, conference and uh, give me this opportunity to talk about some uh, research topic in this conference. So, as you see, I'll be talking about conjugacy problems in group, but uh, this is a a really very uh, vast topic. So, and we talking about some particular um, conjugacy problem, it's called reversibility. So as you all know, just to set the stage, two elements are said to be conjugate. You, you can find third element in the group such that this happens. And usually we uh, use this notation X is conjugate to Y by this uh, mathematical symbol. And then the general problem is determine that uh, one to elements in a group are conjugate or not. So that's a very uh, general problem and which is in general, uh, as always in mathematics, it's difficult, uh, but uh, can you say something about it in a particular group and also some particular type of conjugacy problems in your favorite group? So that is the idea. Uh, so let me uh, begin with one particular type of conjugacy, which is called reversibility or reality. and uh, so an element is uh, said to be like real or reversible. These are the terminologies. Uh, if it's conjugate to its inverse, own inverse. And uh, so this reality comes from algebraic uh, terms and reversibility come from the topological dynamics or geometric terms. And an element is said to be strongly reversible if the conjugating element, when G and G inverse are conjugate, but the conjugating by an order two element, it's sometimes called an involution. And uh, in some cases, uh, in a group, every element could be real or uh, strongly real. And there is a nice characterization of a, a strongly reversible element. It's called uh, uh, some involution length. If the involution length is two, basically it's a product of two involution or two order two element. Okay. And this is clearly an uh, uh, conjugacy invariant, meaning if uh, an element G is real, then if you take its conjugate by some uh, element of the group, let's say H here, then it's again uh, real. So it's it can it's like pretty simple. You uh, just uh, uh, do this computation, you will see that it's a, a conjugacy invariant, which is nice. So the idea is you pick your favorite element in the conjugacy class and try to show that it's conjugate to its inverse, then you are done basically. And the idea is to classify all the reversible elements in your favorite group. And um, so let me give you some quick examples uh, to go with. So, uh, so I'll, I'll begin with some finite group. So you take your uh, quaternion group. Uh, you can see easily that every element over here is real or reversible, meaning it's any element is conjugate to its inverse but uh, none of them are actually strongly reversible except the central element like the plus minus identity so an uh, element is to be strongly reversible or strongly real you need a lot of involution order to element basically so that is the idea and now the second example is the dihedral groups um, so this is a very uh, interesting example uh, in some sense uh, so but uh, here i'll prove the strongly reversibility of a dihedral group using the infinite dihedral group as you can see, the this is the presentation of the dihedral group. Uh, excuse me. Just... Yeah. So, so infinite dihedral group is generated by two order two element, uh, which is good. And then, uh, if you pick any element of this infinite dihedral group, it could be either RS 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 or RS RS with end with S. So the string with int uh, with R or S, that is the idea. And then the easy computation says that the first case G is exactly equal to G inverse and the second case G inverse will be other way around. So therefore it is uh, strongly reversible. So any element is uh, strongly reversible in the group. It's called strongly real group. And then there is a natural uh, surjection from this infinite dihedral group to the finite one. Therefore uh, the finite dihedral group is as strongly reversible, meaning each element is a product of two order two elements. 
and uh, so yeah so this is nice and now infinite analog uh, in some sense of the diagonal group is the orthogonal group so here just to keep it as a toy example i pick this field to be just real numbers you can pick any any field and this result is uh, sorry and the result is true so uh, this is uh, old result due to Burger. She proved that uh, the orthogonal group is strongly real. Every element is a product of order two elements. So R is not an issue. So you can replace this by any field. And then uh, also in the same paper, she proved that an element is a real or reversible if and only if it's product of order two elements. Uh, it's not saying that every element in the uh, general linear group is uh, real or strongly real, but saying that it's equivalent because uh, obviously, strongly real implies real, but the, not the other way around. But in GLNK, this is true. So, for example, all the unipotents are uh, reversible in the general linear group, whereas there are some semi-simple elements which is not. So here I gave a small example where it shows that element is real, but not uh, really strongly real. So you take your uh, uh, favorite unipotent element and uh, one on zero one in the SL two, and then you compute this this. Uh, the simple example that it's an uh, reversible, meaning it's conjugate to its inverse, if and only if this is minus one is a square. So therefore, you can take this field to be in such a way that minus one is a square. For example, you take any algebraically closed field, uh, C, let's say, and then, uh, but this is never strongly real because uh, the conjugating element is always order four. So you got a group. So this is little, uh, there, are like, there are some subtleties uh, involved uh, to prove that reality and strongly reality are equivalence. In fact, um, in a finite simple groups, a group of lay types, exceptional groups, alternating group everywhere, uh, this is a result that, uh, this is not a single result, this is a lot of activities there. And then in 2010, it has been proved that, and uh, if a finite simple group is real, then it is strongly real as well. It's a nice reason. So anyway, I won't uh, go into this detail. So these are some basic examples uh, to keep in mind. And now I'll uh, move on uh, uh, proving some results, uh, which is a joint work with uh, Gongotri Sorkar. She is now in uh, Delaware. Uh, so um, what we look at that um, these all the groups we have seen so far, it's kind of matrix group or some nice, some linear algebra going on. But uh, now we'll talk about homeomorphism group of a topological space. So it's topological group. Yeah, obviously the other matrix group is also topological group, but uh, here like we are not really interested in the uh, topological uh, group as a like topology involved, but it's we are looking at this as an uh, as an uh, as in as in uh, abstract group, but we'll use the topology of the topological space. So that is basically the idea. So we'll see. Uh, when we get to the theorem that uh, what is going on. So you pick your favorite topological space and put an orientation. Orientation is interesting. And then you look at the set of all orientation preserving homeomorphism of that topological space. Since we put an orientation, we look at only orientation preserving. Also, sometimes it is interesting to look at all the homeomorphism where orientation reversing is um, also involved. And um, and then, uh, then the natural questions that uh, arises uh, is the following. So we'll, we'll look at first one dimensional case, like what will happen of this uh, reversibility or strongly reversibility or in particular conjugacy problems of this homeomorphism group. So here, when we look at this topological group, it's a just compact open topology, but we are looking at these groups as just an abstract group. Okay, so one dimensional case uh, for for example, the real line, uh, you look at, this is a very old result, it's uh, 55. And then it was in a dormant stage. And then uh, in 2009, uh, Nigel, O'Farrell and Sot, uh, they described some necessary and sufficient condition uh, for an elements of this homeomorphism of the circle uh, when they are reversible or strongly reversible and so on. So the natural question is uh, next step to go further is the two-dimensional case. So the surface is the uh, interesting one. So you pick your favorite surface and look at the, and put an orientation and look at the orientation preserving homeomorphism there. And then uh, while thinking, we uh, thought about it a little, that sphere will be a good example. And then uh, 
then uh, we look at maybe uh, the universal cover is nice because most of the surfaces you pick and then the universal cover is just the plane. And then if we uh, classify the conjugacy or this reversibility problem of in the universal cover, then somehow we can go down in the circle. So that is the idea. So in this talk, uh, I'll be talking about uh, homeomorphism group of the plane, therefore. So now uh, the way uh, these people went for homeomorphism group of the real line, so it's uh, a nice that there is some ordering involved. So for example, if you take uh, two homeomorphism, orientation preserving, and if they either push each element in the left or right, then they are conjugate. So uh, this is a very simple thing, and uh, this uh, here you can notice that the usual topology and the order topology, they are just same on a real line. So, but this phenomenon can be uh, detected. This is a very simple phenomenon, but this can be uh, right in a complicated way uh, as we want it, because uh, in R we have this nice thing that's ordering, but over R2, there is no such ordering involved. So the simple thing that any homeomorphism orientation preserving in the plane either pushes each element in the forward direction or in the backward direction can be uh, encoded in a four-dimension zero-oriented foliation of the plane. So yeah, I know it's a simple thing, but we are uh, doing it very complicated way. But that that actually uh, can be generalized to the plane. So you choose any homeomorphism which has no fixed point, then one can associate uh, four-dimension one foliation on the plane. Yeah, I, I'll be uh, uh, defining this term, uh, at least give some pictures of this, what is going on. So this is basically uh, the path we'll follow. That's code, uh, for each homeomorphism of the plane, uh, which has no fixed point, we'll assign some codimension one foliation and then do something about the conjugacy. So uh, this is like a kind of uh, topological character is. So before uh, going on, let me uh, set the stage uh, like, the basic definition, this slide is a little longer and a lot of definition, but don't worry. So this is uh, the only slide where I put a lot of stuff. Okay, so then there is a beautiful paper by Andrea. It's an old paper again. Uh, she said, okay, fine. Uh, so uh, we, we do not have ordering, but can we uh, do something about it? And then she introduced this notion of co-divergent that two elements on the plane can go to infinity together. So, so this is the notation. You uh, have a homeomorphism F, which is called a free mapping. We'll be interested in free mapping only, which has no fixed point, basically. And also you put an orientation on the plane. And uh, and and then the you pick a set, uh, subset of the real number, and it's called Fn goes to infinity. It's uh, if each is each each escapes uh, each compact set, basically, then it goes to infinity. So that's the definition. And then on the plane, you define an equivalence relation. You say, okay, you pick two elements from the plane and then they go to infinity while holding their hand. If you can find out a curve joining them and then this curve goes to infinity. Iterate application of this function, the homeomorphism we apply, it goes to infinity, it's escaping each complex set. So clearly this is an equivalence relation on the plane. But uh, every time you see this equivalence relation, Reflexivity is the triviality, but here reflexivity is the little bit involved. Other two like symmetry and symmetricity and the transitivity is easier here. So the reflexivity is a theorem due to Brown. It's again a old reason. And yeah, so therefore this uh, uh, nice equivalence relation uh, due to this um, beautiful idea of Andrea and each equivalence class is called a fundamental reason. Okay. So, are there any questions? Because this is the main definition we're going to use, the fundamental regions and free matrix. So how did he prove the reflexivity here? Uh, yeah, so this is a result due to Brouwer that you have to prove each point in the plane, f and uh, p goes to infinity. Yeah, this is little involved. Yeah, that's what I said. This is the only place I have seen this reflexivity with this little uh, non-trivial. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Okay, so if there are no more questions, then I'll move on. Okay, so then, uh, so once you define an equivalence relation on the plane, and then uh, there is a notion of foliation, which I'm uh, like assuming that it's a, it's a, foliation is basically a, a decomposition of the plane. 
So it's, we are interested in on the only on the the plane. So foliation is a kind of uh, a decomposition of the plane uh, of some subsets, which is called sometimes leaves of the space, and which are certain coordinates where if you restrict each coordinate functions on these leaves, the second coordinate will be constant. So this is kind of a foliation. Uh, this is basically the definition of a foliation. And uh, I'll define a proper foliation, uh, sorry, proper flow line. Proper flow line is basically, uh, so this each uh, line, you'll see it's there, uh, this could intersect, but we are using only proper flow line. That is, a, it's a homeomorphic to R, and which is invariant under the free mapping, uh, S. And if you take this R in an infinity, it's a Jordan curve on the sphere. And one can prove a, little proposition that if you have a free mapping also here this is a new term yeah don't worry about this it's embedded in a flow if you know it's fine otherwise it's also okay uh, yeah this is some technical term so we need to assume that this is embedded in a flow and then each point on the plane there will be a unique proper flow line containing point this is one thing this observation and then if you look at each uh, uh, this unique proper flow line these are called leaves of the space uh, of the foliation and then you collect them, this uh, becomes a foliation of the plane. So this is nice. So what do you do? So you have a free mapping, which is a orientation preserving homeomorphism of the plane, which does not have any uh, fixed point. And then uh, you collect all the, this proper flow line, this becomes a foliation of the plane. And uh, once you have done that, so uh, yeah, okay, there is some, um, some basic reason. Well, uh, so you define this equivalence relation using this uh, two elements going to the infinity, that's co-divergent. And then, uh, so how does it behave in the reflexivity or uh, conjugation? So two elements are uh, related by this F, if and only if uh, this uh, conjugating element, if you take any element H, H uh, need not be a free mapping, H could be any homeomorphism, then they are also related, but this will be obviously free mapping. Then the simple corollary is, so there could be uh, so many fundamental regions on the plane, given your free mapping F or G, suppose you have M and N fundamental region, this is a necessary condition to be two elements to be conjugate. The better be their fundamental regions are same. So now you can, uh, I'll uh, show some example where this can be shown that the other way around is not true. So suppose you have two uh, free mapping, which are same fundamental region, they may not be conjugate. Okay. And uh, once you have a reversible element, let's say F is reversible, meaning F inverse is conjugate to F, then the reverser, this H, will permute this fundamental region. This follows from this basic observation. Okay, so uh, let me uh, give you uh, one example also as a kind of a theorem that you have a free mapping, which has exactly one fundamental region, then it better be a translation. As you can see, uh, any two elements you can take and then they, hold their hand together and goes to infinity because this translation by just one length of I'm taking. And uh, this is again a result due to Andrea that uh, this is indeed uh, necessary and as well as sufficient. So once you have a fundamental region, then this better be trans conjugate to a translation. All right. And then how about uh, two, three and so on? So this is the idea. And uh, two fundamental region, this is impossibility. This is not possible. Like uh, you uh, plane uh, cannot have like exactly two fundamental reasons. This is again hard due to Andrea. And uh, also uh, along the way, you can just see that the translations are basically strongly reversible. Some, uh, you can do, play some algebraic jugglery and then you can prove that the translation is uh, conjugate to its inverse uh, by this antipodal map. So therefore it's uh, strongly reversible in the homeomorphism. All right. So one fundamental region is becomes uh, the, that uh, correspond to a translation, two is not possible. Then how about three? So uh, for three fundamental region, there are, uh, one can show that there are a reef flow. This is very uh, well studied um, uh, pre-mapping the, on the plane and which has exactly three fundamental region. And um, well, so we prove that this is not a conjugate to its inverse if you take the reef flow. And one can come up with uh, uh, three fundamental regions and uh, uh, prove that this is not a reef flow and so on. So how, uh, how to do this? Uh, so suppose uh, it is reversible by some uh, orientation preserving. Oh, as you can see that uh, you can take H to be just reflex and then it will be conjugate, but that is not in homeo plus. 
So we are interested in homeo plus. So H is in homeo plus. So then uh, this is a fundamental region. Uh, this three fundamental region R minus one, where this is a closed region. R one is again a closed region. R zero is an open region. So by uh, nice property of this homeomorphism that this better fix this middle one. And uh, by the previous uh, basic observation, we have seen that H either permute this R1 and R minus one or fixed. So both the cases are almost same. So I'll assume that this reverse are fixed all the three fundamental reasons and we'll arrive at a contradiction. And contradiction will be this, this is not oriented simply. So this is a reversibility equation that F is conjugate to F inverse by this orientation preserving map H. And then you can take X, Fx will go off one direction. It's a translation on this region. And then you apply H, H, uh, X will be somewhere here. And use the reversibility equation, it will be H. So now just, uh, and since H fixed this R0, Y will be somewhere in it. And this is uh, my reference point. So you just zoom in this picture and then you will see. Him. So X, Fx and Y, after applying F, this is the picture. But now you can see that this is orientation preserving, like this is uh, clockwise, but this is anti-clockwise. So uh, this is not reversible. Okay, and uh, this all the pictures uh, drawn by my uh, collaborator, like Gangotri Sarkar. So thanks to us. And uh, well, so this is a, a theorem I want to talk about that we provide an. Uh, Necessary and sufficient condition when two pre-mappings will be conjugate. But we have to assume this technical condition that both the pre-mappings, uh, the fixed point three orientation preserving homeomorphism, they're embedded in a flow. They either they're conjugate or conjugate to its inverse. If and only if the corresponding foliation, we have defined the collection of the leaves, they are equivalent. Uh, so two leaves are equivalent if you find an homeomorphism of the plane which uh, which uh, transport each leaves of the one leaf space to the other leaf space in a orientation manner. And then uh, I'm not talking about what orientation on the foliation is, but over uh, a plane, every foliation can be put some, uh, can be given some uh, orientation basically. So this is an Hefliger F theory. It's a beautiful theory. And uh, then it's also involved the leaf spaces basically. What is the leaf spaces? So you have a foliation, for example, you look at the translation, leaf spaces equal, basically you cross each leaf to a point. So this becomes a line. You take the reef flow, it will be something like this. And you can take uh, five region, fundamental regions. This is the leaf space and you can go on. Basically, except to fundamental region, any number of fundamental region is, uh, and, uh, is a possibility of the plane. And this leaf space is very nice. Also, it's notorious because it's non housed most of the time it's non house drop so all the cw complex technique or other thing will like fall apart and but the nice thing is it's simply connected so simply connected uh, pi one is trivial and one dimensional manifold but possibly non house drop so i'll prove the forward direction that two foliations are equivalent then either they are conjugate or conjugate to its inverse like i'll give a just idea obviously this is a little long proof so you look at the reef flow and uh, this has three fundamental regions and look at the quotient space uh, and uh, looks like something like this cylinder. And on the other hand, we have this leaf space and it's a non-house drop. These are the non-separated points on the black. And then there is a, you can define a natural map from here to here using some equivalence relation on the leaf spaces. And uh, we can, we could show that this map from here to here whose fiber is a circle, it's a trivial fiber bundle. So first we'll prove that this is a fiber bundle and then we prove that this um, leaf space BF, yeah, this is capital F or small f, yeah, there's some notation problem. Okay, so this leaf space is contractible and then therefore it's a trivial fiber. So in general, this is also true. This is the picture we showed. So what we have shown that this leaf space is contractible and therefore this fiber bundle is trivial. And then we assume this two leaf, uh, the foliations are equivalent. And there is a nice theory due to Hebdegard and Rip. They showed that once the foliations are equivalent, then their leaf spaces are homeomorphic. But this is actually the quotient space. And then use some covering space theory. One can arrive whether it is conjugate to or it's in. And then the converse is also true. Okay, so this is basically uh, the idea of the proof. I think I'm almost up, out of time. So I'll just take one minute. And well, so this is there is a nice book due to Farrell and Thought. 
Uh, so there are, this is a kind of survey book, also a lot of interesting open problems about reversibility. And you can pick your favorite group and see what is known or not. Okay, so thank you very much for your attention. I'll stop. I'll take questions. Yeah, yeah. thank thank you very you. much, uh, Shushila. Yeah. Any questions? Okay, so if not, so maybe I'll ask one question. Yes. We still have four minutes. Yeah. yeah <laughs> so sure. you said uh, two fundamental regions are impossible in R2, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Why yeah. is it so? Like, is yeah, there a quick that, proof? There's uh, no. So, yeah, yeah, I, I know. So, this is actually the longest proof in this NDS paper. Oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is the longest proof in this paper. Yeah. This is an old paper, though. And uh, this is a little longer. Also, proving that it's, uh, one fundamental is a conjugate to a translation is a little long. But uh, the longest proof is that two fundamental reason is an impossibility. So they use some graph technique. They draw some graph, and it's like a little longer. Yeah, hard to explain. But yeah, I'm sorry. I so, see. I assume I, see. I can say something. Yeah. I see. Uh, I have one question. Yeah, please. I mean, for any natural number <laughs> except two, do you have a fundamental reason? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for any for any uh, natural number except two. You have a fundamental region. In fact, there are countable, uncountable, any number you can generate this uh, number of fundamental region. You can construct a homeomorphism and then uh, there will be that many fundamental region you wish. But for example, in number three, like the fundamental region I showed is the rip flow. There are three fundamental regions. You can construct more uh, homeomorphism, which is not really the uh, not really the rip flow, but you can construct also three fundamental region. So for example, I uh, drew some example, yeah. So this five, I didn't say. So you can see there are five fundamental reason of this and this. It's kind of reflow. flow. So, uh, and, but they are not really conjugate. But they both have uh, five fundamental reason, for example. This is also uh, like how many configuration in some sense you can make. So for example, in five, there you can move at least two. Actually more than two can be made. So yeah, you so said uncountable. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So go ahead. Uncountable is also possible. There could. Oh, be is it? In the yeah. 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 This is weird. I know. Yeah. This Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But the main problem is this uh, leaf space, which is nice, but it's a non-house. So every everything you think about it, and then it just falls apart. Yeah. But then fall. All these, all these uh, fundamental regions are they? I mean, unbounded always yeah, or yeah. unbounded? Yeah, because by the very definition, because they has to go to infinity. It's always connected, path connected, but it's unbounded. Yeah. <clears throat> and what will happen if the map is not free? Why are Sorry. You... So can you be a little louder? Uh, so what will happen if the map is not free? I mean, why are you need that? Free? You asking free? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you, you need a fixed point free. The reflexivity will false, will be a false. Like if it has a fixed point, then FNX will not go straight. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah, that's okay. the due to Brower. Yeah. Again, again, this is a reflexivity is the little like it is not difficult, but it's requires proof. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, any more questions? Yeah, if not, uh, let us thank the speaker. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much for your attention. It's